So if you go onto any internet forum and try and do any research about wheel size, chances are you're just going to find a lot of unscientific and polarising opinions which don't really make any kind of sense at all. I'm a keen XC racer myself, so when we heard about a research study looking into wheel size and the wheel size debate, trying to settle this once and for all, it sounded really cool and we all jumped to the opportunity to go and check it out. My name is Dr Howard Hurst. Uh, I work as a senior lecturer in sport and exercise science at the University of Central Lancashire in Preston. One of my big passions is, is mountain biking and, and cycling in general and, and that stimulated my area of, of research interest. I think a lot of people have this idea that scientists spend all the time in, in white coats holed up in a lab but um, because of my interest in cycling I get to come out to, to fun places like this. We're looking at the, uh, the influence of different wheel size standards, so 26, 27 and a half and 29 inch wheels, and how they influence the biomechanics and, and the physiology of mountain bike performance. Everybody has their own theories, uh, so we want to try and add a little bit of science to that, and we're trying to put some definitive answers to that question. The equipment that we're using today is state of the art and the reason why we, we've gone down that route is so that we can increase that, that accuracy in, in the data that we collect. So in terms of power output, we're using the SRM system which has long been seen as the benchmark in, in power meters. In terms of energetics, we have a portable gas analyzer which is basically a mouthpiece which samples how much oxygen and carbon dioxide the, each rider is, is producing and using so we can see whether there's any differences over each lap with each of the three different wheel sizes. To take it a step further, we're also using a system called the Delsys Trinio which is a, a fully wireless electromyography system. So similar to a heart rate monitor which measures the electrical activity uh, of the heart across the chest, these measure the electrical activity of each muscle. So we've got four sensors for each rider, one on the calf, one on the thigh, and then one on the bicep and tricep. The reason why we chose those muscles was the, the primary muscles that tend to get used. With, with the Delsys system, each sensor costs around £7,000 so in total. It's about £100,000 worth of equipment that we'll be using today. In terms of accuracy, we're using triaxial accelerometers. So within the, the EMG sensors on the muscles, we can also measure how much force in Gs is being exerted on the rider and each muscle forwards, backwards, up, down and side to side. So that will give us a bit more of an idea of how much input the rider is actually putting into riding each bike. We've got three bikes that are identical. The project is being supported by Santa Cruz Bicycles. So they've given us three Santa Cruz Superlight frames, all kitted out with the same group sets, same tyres, same shocks. There's heart rate and GPS, again, reasonably standard. Well, then we'll also look at the oxygen uptake, so how much oxygen the rider is actually using and how much carbon dioxide they're producing as well. With that system, we can also work out the calorie ex expenditure per lap. Uh, and see whether that differs. The Delsys system, the EMG system, that will be looking at the muscle fibre recruitment and how that differs. Clayton Vale has a 3.8 kilometre purpose-built mountain bike track, which is pretty representative of the terrain that riders would experience on a, on a, a cross-country race. So we have a series of of tight twisty sections, some, some short sharp climbs, some longer climbs, gravel, mud. So we get, we're getting a, a bit of everything that a rider would be expected to uh, experience within a cross country race. So what we want to do is break the course down into small sections. So as well as looking at the values over the whole of the course, we're actually going to break it down by climbs and descents again to see whether there's any differences between the three wheel sizes over a given section as well. We've weighed all the riders pre-testing without any equipment on. We then weighed them again with all the sensors and the gas analyzers and the masks, the GPS is uh, all on as well. We've factored in the weight of the bikes. We've um, adjusted the shock 
settings, so we, we've increased or decreased the, uh, the volume of the air in, in the forks and the, and the weir shocks according to the, uh, the rider's uh, build and, and to some extent their riding style. The participants that we are recruiting for this study and the three that we uh, were testing today are all experienced cross-country uh, mountain bikers. Um, for the project we specifically asked for riders aged between 18 and 30 with at least 18 months racing experience. So we, we have a nice uh, tight controlled group of athletes so we don't get any, uh, anybody's data skewing it. In terms of the protocols that we've used today, each rider has been asked to ride three laps of the 3.8 3 kilometre circuit at race pace, which has been taking them around 15 minutes to, to complete, and then to ensure that they have enough rest between each lap and that there's no uh, residual fatigue there. They've been given an hour's rest between, uh, they're fully hydrated, fully uh, fueled up, ready to go for the next lap. So that should give you a bit of an idea about the study. It was all in all, it was a really cool day. In terms of the bikes, again, it was very interesting to be able to ride three different bikes, all from the same brand, all different wheel sizes in quick succession over the same lap on the same day. I enjoyed riding the 29 and the 26 really, because I've ridden those before. The 26 are super fun on the descents, 29 are super stable climbed really nicely. It was, it was kind of weird wearing the, wearing the mask and you can just hear your breathing and wheezing when you're giving it full gas. I definitely gave it everything I had for each lap, so at the end of the day I had no idea which bike was faster. But we've had a chat with Howard and he says there's some really interesting data, so I'm really looking forward to seeing the results coming up in part two.